Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements Add Border video, we'll be adding in this border, in here this mat around this picture and this frame as well. If you enjoy this video, make sure that you subscribe to my channel, click on the like button, and if you want to learn more about Photoshop Elements, take a look in the description for links to my complete Photoshop Elements training. Okay, let's get to it. Adding a texturized border like this inside of Photoshop Elements is actually pretty easy, but there are several steps involved to get to this point. I'm just going to close this file down. We'll start from scratch. There we go. Okay, we'll start off with File, New, Blank File. I'll do this at the default Photoshop Elements size, which is 6 wide by 4 tall in inches, at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Choose OK. There we go. There is the file right there. The first thing I want to add in is just put in something in here to create our border with and we'll do that with our graphics. Now in graphics I have this set to shapes right there so it's graphics and shapes and then we're about halfway down as you can see here if you go up to the top there's a lot of stuff in here and about halfway down we we'll get into some frames right here and then I'll scroll down a little bit further down past the frames, we get into some straight frames, some straight borders. Here we are, right down here. And this one here is kind of a square frame. Hard edges, here's the same kind of thing as a rectangle with hard edges. That's when you want. It's called Outlined Rectangle 4. Click on that, and that places that onto your page. Now, the color of this comes in at your default foreground color. Right now, mine is at the standard default here which is black and that's fine and then let's just take this and drag the corners out until it fits onto the page doesn't need to be exact we're going to be refitting this anyway but just get it so that the top and bottom are about are about full so you can come down just a little bit if you want to we'll be again shrinking this in just a bit choose OK so there's our basic frame let's now put a texture onto this if we go back to our layers You'll see here, there we are, there's our frame. It's a shape, and as you can see here, little shape icon, we need to convert this into a regular graphic. And to do that, right-click on the name, and click on Simplify Layer. It's now a regular graphic. Let's now put our texture in here, and we'll be putting in a color on that first, and then putting on our texture. Let's choose a new color. Click on the color down here. I'm just going to come into the kind of orange yellows a little bit right in here. You can see right there on the color on the right hand side, there's your red, there's your yellow, and there's your oranges. And right where the yellow or orange begins to shift, orange into yellow, right around in here somewhere. It doesn't need to be exact, but somewhere in here. And then up around here, upper left hand corner, kind of over near the white, almost to white, but not quite, you'll find your tan colors are up in there. Your kind of buff beige colors are up in here. And again, if the orange is off by a little bit, it doesn't make that big of a difference on that color. So anywhere in here and over here up towards the left-hand corner at the top, and that's going to be your beige or your tan colors. Choose OK. There's your foreground color. Let's now go to the paint bucket and then just click inside the black part of that shape and that fills in that color. Now that we have that, we can apply a texture onto this. Go up to Filter, come down to the Filter Gallery right here. Let this load in. There's our Filter Gallery, and I'm on Texture. There we go. Bottom right-hand corner, Texturizer, and the texture you want is Burlap. I normally have mine set for top left, which is right in the middle here. And then you can adjust the relief. The relief is how much texture you're actually seeing on there. I like it in around here, somewhere around four or five. Seems to be pretty good. You can make the texture larger or smaller. That's up to you. It's a little bit rougher in here. It shows better at full size or when it's printed than it does here in the preview. So I'll just set mine at 100%. I'll just type that in. There we are. 100%, five on the relief, top left on the light, and burlap on our texture, choose OK. And that puts on that texture. Again, don't worry about how it looks here. 
This will look better when it's full size and or when this is printed. Let's now put our picture inside of this thing. So I'll place the picture, go up here to File and Place, and I have one right here. This is from an earlier project that I did about a year or so ago. And I'll just place this one in here. Any picture is fine. Choose OK. Now take this and drag it underneath your border layer up there. And then just grab the corners and move it around until you have it sized the way you want to fit inside of your frame. Make sure you're overlapping outside of the frame just a little bit on that. If it's too small, just make it a bit larger. You just kind of play around with it until you get the adjustment that you want, the size that you want to fit in nicely so it looks nice in the frame. I think that's pretty good. And then choose OK by hitting that green check mark. OK, there we go. Now we have some stuff out here outside. We don't want to have that. So go back up to the shape layer up here. Grab the magic wand. Make sure that contiguous is checked. I have tolerance set at zero, which is fine. It's a new selection. Click out in the white area. That selects everything that's outside of that frame, nothing inside. Let's now invert this selection. So select inverse. We now have the frame and everything inside of the frame selected. Let's now come down to our photo layer and then just hit the layer mask button and that masks that layer out and cleans up that edge. And the reason why I'm doing this as a layer mask instead of cutting that out, kind of deleting that, is in case I want to reposition the picture in the future, I can then just redo my layer mask and it'll be nice and clean. Okay, there we go. So far, so good. Now I'm going to link these two layers together. Hold the shift key down, click on your second layer, click on this little link button in here. They're now linked together. So if I grab one of my corners and drag, they'll both scale at the same time. You can see that they're kind of both moving and scaling. They're linked together. And then choose OK. The reason for that is we'll have to resize this, refit this to fit inside of our frame, which we'll be making next. One last little thing here. To make this look more realistic, I want to have a little bevel on the edge and a little drop shadow right along in here. So let's put in a little bit of effects up here on our shape. This is our border. Let me just rename this. Double click on that. Rename this border. There we are. Up to layer. Come down to layer style. Style settings. Let's do our drop shadow first. Now I like moving my lighting angle over to about 135 in here somewhere. I'll just type it in 135. I like that angle. That puts it up here so your shadow comes down this way so you get a little bit of shadow on the top and a little bit of shadow on the left hand side. And then I'll leave the size and the opacity as they are and then move the distance over a bit just so I can actually see that edge right there. Maybe about 12 or so. Just a little, little thin drop shadow right along that edge. Okay, now come down to where it says bevel and this just gives it just a little slight bevel in there. You want just just a little bit. There's no bevel. And just a touch, about like that. Something about six or seven, maybe eight in there. You can type that in as well. And it puts just a little bit of a curve onto that edge, which makes it look more three-dimensional. And choose OK. So we zoom in on that. There we go, it's up on the corner. You can see right there just a little bit of a bevel on that edge, gives it a three-dimensional look. And then there's that drop shadow. Okay, let's just go back to fit on screen. Let's now do our frame. Make sure you're on your top layer up here. Let's go back to our graphics. And I'm just going to scroll up. Now I'm using the wheel on my mouse and I'm just scrolling up. We get back up into those frames that we had up here. Here's the frames showing up. We'll go up a little ways on our frames. And in here we can grab one of these frames and then use this frame as a new frame in our picture. I'm going to grab this one right here. Notice it comes in at the same color as we last used. That's fine for right now. Now I want to rotate this around so we're going to click just click outside. See that kind of a curved arrow there? Click outside and then come down here where it says angle and change this to 90 degrees and then choose OK. That just rotates it around. Let's now grab the corner and I'll pull this out 
until it's just about as big as I can make it on the page. I don't want to go clear to the edge, but pretty close to the edge. Choose OK. They should have about the same space left and right side. If you don't, you'll want to just move it back and forth a little bit. Okay, there's our basic frame. I'm going to fill this with black just for a minute. I'll just choose black down here. Choose OK. Let's fill this. It's easy to see against our other picture. Okay, back to our layers. Let's go here to our border. Remember, these are both locked together, so I can now grab that corner up there. And let's resize this so that it just fits inside of this frame. And I'll just stretch these out until we get inside our frame. There we are. And I think I'll use my cursor keys, my up key a little bit here, and just kind of tap this up a little bit until that fits nicely inside of our frame. There we go. If you want to make these sides even with these sides, just make sure that your top and bottom are the sizes that you want. Let's make them about that size. So they're, they're pretty nicely sized in here. It's just about full frame. You want them just in behind that a little bit, a little bit hidden in there. Choose OK. Go up to our top shape here and then pull the sides in just until it covers up a little bit of that frame. So there we go. So our, our mat in there, our border, looks nice and clean. We have this frame positioned. Let's now put some effects on our frame. And we're up on our shape here. The first thing I want to do is I want to change the color on this. And we'll change that color back to kind of our light tan color. Again, this doesn't have to be exact. Just anywhere up in here is fine. Choose OK. We're going to be changing this again. It's going to be changed completely here in just a minute. But I just want to kind of see where my, my brightness is on that. Looks good. You can see over here we're just a little bit off on the edge right in there on our picture. So I'm going to go to the picture here. I'll use the right arrow and just tap it over just a little bit so I don't have that edge showing. I think we're okay now. Okay, back up to our shape. Let's now put an effect on this. Come down here to the styles. Now if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop Elements, the styles may be at the top of the window instead of at the bottom of the window. They could be a tab up here instead of a button down there. This is Photoshop Elements 15, and we have effects, filters, and styles as separate buttons. In Photoshop Elements 14 and earlier, effects is a button down here, and then it has tabs for filters and styles up at the top. Only difference. Go to the Wow Chrome right here, and the one you want is the upper right-hand corner. It's called Wow Chrome Reflecting. Click on that, and that applies that kind of chrome effect onto our frame. All right, back to our layers. Let's put a new layer above this one. And we're going to be doing a fill on this. Two ways to do this. You can put in a new layer here, change your color, and then use the paint bucket to fill that. Or we can save a step in here, go up to the layer, and come down to new fill layer right here and solid color. Kind of does both things for you. In here, make sure that the Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask is selected. That means that this layer is only going to affect the layer underneath, which is our one shape layer, our frame layer. Choose OK. And I'll go clear over here to the right-hand side, giving me a nice bright orangey color in there. There we go. Now you might like that. In that case, you're done with this layer. You might want to change the effect a little bit. You can do that by going here where it says Normal. These are your blend modes. And you can come down, you can choose different blend modes for different effects. There's a soft light mode. There's a hard light mode. So you have lots of different effects you can get in here just by changing the blend mode. The one I want is just color, the very, very bottom. So it brings it in, but it's a little more subtle than we have without that. So here's the normal. See this real gold tone, kind of real solid gold, almost a brassy look. And then color is a little bit more subtle on that. I just have kind of happen to like the color version on this. So there's that frame. So here's our picture, our little beveled edge in there, and our, our shadow. We have our border, a little textured border. Our frame, the frame comes with it. When you put the chrome effect on this, that gives you that drop shadow in there as well. So that's taken care of as part of that effect. 
All we need now to do is just to give us some interesting background in here. I'll come down to the background. I'll just fill this with a gradient. I'll just go to my foreground background colors, that little icon right there. Click on that. That restores your foreground background default colors. Go up to the gradient tool. You should see it looking like this. If you don't, you've used something else recently. Click on that upper left hand corner. That's your default. Choose OK. Make sure that you're on linear gradient and then click down here about one quarter in from the right side and then drag up to about one quarter in from the left side and that gives you a nice kind of diagonal gradient in there just to help things stand out. So there it is. That's adding a border, in this case a textured border mat and then a frame under our photograph making it look like it's actually sitting on a wall nicely framed. Let me just enlarge this here so I can see this a little bit better. I'll pull this out. Let's zoom in a couple of touches and there we go. So there's our add border right there and then add frame right outside there. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.